Let me tell you, folks, I believe in freedom. I believe it has been woven into the very DNA of mankind, from the, from the moment divinity cradled lifeless humanity to itself, and to humankind alone, breathed into and imparted the breath of life, man was created free. The tripartite crown of creation, and from that moment until this, man has longed for freedom. Freedom, the very word inspires the soul to soar, and the spirit to long, as the poet said, to break the surly bonds of earth and touch the face of God. Our fathers faced the fury and sea of England's redcoats to breathe the rarefied air of freedom. They dreamed that dream of freedom, folks, from the dungeons where men were bound by darkness and tyranny and oppression. Throughout the eons of time, man has faced flood or fire, stormed the very gates of hell, or even a passing glimpse of freedom. Freedom, it's that precious and elusive key that looses the chains of the captives and echoes down through the fog of history. Freedom, freedom that fills even the very fiber of creation. Unfortunately, we have falsely thought that freedom is the right to choose, but it's not. It's the result of making right choices. Freedom found its way to this land, folks, not from palaces or thrones, not from judicial halls or congressional houses or executive chambers or even military might but from a barren hill where the darkness of death and hell gathered and where the dearest and best of and from all eternity made freedom ring when he split into the curtain of partition and in piercing that darkness, bought us and brought to humanity the light of freedom. Freedom came when the shackles of Adam's fall were loosed from mankind. Now, now the choice is ours. Will we walk again into that prison of darkness where bondage is our keeper and the distant memory of freedom, our tormentor? Or will we choose the light of freedom where there is no more darkness? Look around our fallen state, our, our debt is beyond measure, innocent blood is flowing in the land, the government is gorged with its own ego and, and drunken with its own self-importance, and sadly, sadly, it and they are a reflection of us, the people. We crave that which we cannot have, long for that which we do not need, seek what cannot be found in government programs or military might. We seek the peace of freedom. And if it's not too late, we must be willing that it could or perhaps even should cost us everything as it did many of our forebears to taste again the bread of freedom. Perhaps you've heard of the Fukushima 50, these are the brave troop of 180 people who were putting their lives at risk to work the toxic nuclear reactors in Japan that through their efforts, the reactors can be contained, thereby saving their compatriots. They've chosen sacrifice over inaction, heroism over safety. Mankind's freedom came with a high price where blood was shed in an epic battle at Calvary, but freedom always comes with a high price. Our forebears, who sought not comfort from their country, but sought freedom for themselves and their countrymen, knew that price. They weren't led by conservatives or liberals, but by preachers of the black-robed regiment. They understood the need for a miracle, the necessity of a miracle, and they knew that without a biblical understanding of first principles, there would be no miracle and subsequently no freedom. Benjamin Franklin asked, in the beginning of the contest with Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayers in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. Do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? My friends, if this Tea Party movement is to be successful in our contest with the darkness of a powerful progressive cabal, we must be sensible of the danger our nation faces from both the Republicans and the Democrats and pray for and surrender ourselves to divine guidance and protection. I believe that there are among us those who are foreordained to this high calling, destined to fight for the restoration of America. I believe, folks, that you and I are those people. And if it costs us all that we have, and if we expend all that we are, we have honorably run the race and walked out our destiny knowing but the outcome is in the hands of the Almighty, for he who keeps the saint shall decide the outcome, but, but let us do our part as if we decide the outcome. So what shall it be? Shall we rise as one, gather ourselves together and go forward? Or shall we sit in reflective but hapless solitude? With freedom or socialist slavery hanging in the balance, let us ask as did Patrick Henry, 
Why stand we here idle? What is it that the gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Will we still sit idle? Shall we not stand and join the fray? There are tea parties across the nation, patriot organizations in every city and hamlet. Why indeed stand we here idle? The fate of a nation rests with us, folks. We'll dread history say of us that freedom died while we sat idle. Or will we rise to the challenge and in so doing win back freedom and let jubilant history exalt of us that this truly was the greatest generation? For the Baker Report, I'm Jake Baker. Until tomorrow, good night, take care, Lord bless.